had a bit of a late start this morning. I, I know I was super tired after the cruising last night and the long drive to get here yesterday. But yeah, we're just out at a site um, in the dunes. There's quite a lot of trash and literal rubbish just hanging around. So we're still out here. Um, I just flipped this old sleeping bag. Um, and holy crap, it is a dwarf bee snake. Um, you can see these guys actually mimic the other little adders in the area. Let's see if I can get them to just calm down quickly. I'll give you a little look at them. They hiss and flatten their heads and they sort of strike out. These things are absolutely ridiculously cool. Fizzing to get one of these here. Um, I have got one here before, um, it was a little bit lighter in color than this one, so quite nice to get a bit of variation, but you can see as they flatten their heads like that, um, they are rear fanged venomous snakes, but they're not, they're not particularly dangerous or anything like that, so there's no risk of just handling them. But yeah, let me just flip this other little thing here and put them on the sand, and give you guys a better look at them. Here's just a better look at this dwarf beak snake. He just would not sit still, so it's been a bit of a mission. You can see they've got that really sharp, sort of pointed head, um, quite roughly keeled scales, and they just sort of live amongst these sort of little small bushes in, in the sand dunes here. Um, at a bit of a dump site, there's loads of trash. Um, obviously, where this guy was hiding just makes them much easier to see, but you can see they get these sort of defensive sort of postures going and sort of hiss out and strike but yeah like i said they're not dangerous at all these guys are primarily gecko feeders eating a lot of the barking geckos and some of those austin june geckos that we saw last night um, but yeah they get quite a bit bigger than this they probably get about triple to quadruple the size so this is quite a small one um, as you can just see from my hand on sort of scale there but yeah nice start to the morning we are going to keep at it because there's loads of trash here and <laughs> come back we still need to get pictures of you friend um, but yeah I'm gonna snap a couple of photographs of this dude see he's actually got a really nice looking belly pattern under there as well only the third snake of the trip and it's a goodie so doing well of course we just finished getting photos just gonna release this tall beak snake back into this pile of trash which seems a bit ridiculous but shade, there's food here, and obviously they're happy here because it's a place I've sort of seen them before. Pretty gross and disgusting, but it's just the reality we live in, I guess. So it's been pretty quiet after that dwarf beak snake. I've just seen a couple of Marolis buzzing around the bushes. But what's pretty crazy to me is the amount of just trash that extends into these dunes. Probably like kilometers into just into the natural felt and the amount of clothing like i found a big dump where that dwarf beak snake was and it was just like i i can't even begin like i don't know dozens and dozens of bales of clothes so you think about the plastics and the rubber and the metal but man clothing pollution is a real problem but yeah we're gonna keep at it i've probably got hours left yeah i, I could do this actually for days there's so much Habitat to look through, but let's keep at it and hopefully you can turn something else up. At long last, we have another herb for today. It's just a little female Austin's June gecko. Same species as the ones we were getting last night. Just got it under this tiny little piece of cardboard. See a really good looking little gecko. Looks like this one has a full tail. Oh, you can see just wants to get out of the sand. These guys are pretty common, I'm just going to pop it back under its little piece of mat that it was under, so we're going to carry on. Going to force it back under front. So we're just still out here, I've been scratching through this big pile of concrete here, not having much luck. Uh, followed a couple of snake tracks, but it didn't lead up to much, but I just saw this little root tile. And I flipped it over and oh hot damn we have another dwarf beak snake this is absolutely ridiculous have a look at this thing he's doing that classic threat posture making a 
himself out like he's a little adder. You can see up my poke he should. Yeah, they sort of have this crazy strike out. And he's recoiling himself just like the adders do. Um, apologize for the wind, it's, it's super windy. He looks like he's got a bit of a scar on his back there. But absolutely mental. I love seeing these snakes, and they're not something I see often at all. So to see two and a half, pretty damn. Snap some pictures of this dude. Of course, and then just get on our way out of here. I'm pretty much done for the spot now. So we're just back at it again. We're just flipping some, these are like little sheets of asbestos. You can see all the tracks from all the fossorial lizards. It's pretty much almost. Almost sunset, I mean the sun's just about to go down, so we're just gonna move through here quickly. Oh, there you go. That's a little Austin's gecko. Just bunkered down here, waiting for the sun to set and then they sort of come out and kick around. They're quite beautiful geckos actually. Um, they almost always have regrowing tails. You can see that's just a regenerated tail system over there. This will be a big female, and the males are much, much smaller. Yeah, pretty tough to see. I've seen loads of these the last couple of days, so not much to harp on about. Just sorry, we're gonna scratch around here in this little house. Quickly, but no fossorials. Let me just put a sheep back. And we're just gonna pop them back under, and we're gonna carry on walking, working through the rest of the stuff. Get out of here. I just saw something scoot under the sand. Oh, there you go. It's another type of saurus. This is type of saurus vermis. I know in some of the other videos yesterday, I keep getting the name wrong. But yeah, this is type of saurus vermis, the southern blind pink legless skink. Um, these guys are ridiculous. Check it out. As you sort of put them in the sand, they just disappear. But we're going to log some photographs of this dude. Let me see if I can't give you a better look at him because he's tweaking out of it. But yeah, you get that tiny little face. He's just obviously trying to dig his way back into the substrate. But yeah, again, this place is so windy, but what can you do? But yeah, this is a nice big adult. It's probably the largest one I've seen in the last couple of days. So nice to get a nice big one. But yeah, this guy, we're going to grab a few photos and I'm just going to pop him back. So I was beginning to lose hope a little bit that we'd see what we're looking for, but you can see there is where the adder has been sitting. Apologies for the wind, it's as windy as a mad dog out here, it's ridiculous. Um, he's obviously not in here now, it's probably where he would have sheltered last night and he would have moved during the day, but I can see where the track's going, so let's give it a follow, but like you can see now I'm just going to disturb here, so we can see the snake is no longer there. Let's see, you can see he sort of sat there for a minute. Oh yeah, the track sort of disappears. You can see there's also a depression here, but he's no longer here either. Yeah, it's strange, the track sort of disappears right there, and he's definitely not there. Um, let's see, there's some other tracks here. I know there's a bird, bird, um, bird feet, bird tracks. Snake here, but he is no longer here, so we're gonna carry looking and hopefully we can turn on up in this channel area. Well, guys, have a look at this. Um, I found another, straight up here, I found another little area where there was obviously an adder sleeping. You can see it was sleeping here. I should have checked that it wasn't there first, but I'll just follow the track and you can see the base of this little bush here. I forgot where you can see um, that all the dew has been dropping down. If you have a look right here, you know, just focus quickly. If you have a look right here, there is our target species, the Macoland orphan, British Schneideroi. Um, it is also the smallest adder species in the world, so that's pretty sick. I'm, I'm gonna grab a quick in situ picture. 
just to log it and then I'll gently just pull him out. We can have a good look at him. And then I'm just gonna put some back into this bush. Maybe I'll let me get some just camera in situ pictures real quick. And then we're gonna have a good look at this guy. Looks like a fully grown adult, so quite a decent size. So just you know what's quite interesting, you can see it's lying mostly in the shade. So most of the body is sort of in the shade, like going down, but they're just little sections of the body that are actually uh, in the sun, obviously soaking up some of the heat. Uh, hopefully the audio is not too bad. Like I said, it is extremely windy. I'm probably 50 or 60 meters from the beach from the coast. So it's a little bit of a nuisance, but yeah, in all its tiny glory, a bit of schneid ride with a macro dwarf header. Just going back to where it was resting earlier, just to give you guys some idea. Um, the snake obviously would have sheltered here last night out of the wind behind this little bush here. It would have gone here and you can see it, it obviously spent some time here in the sun, obviously during the cooler parts of the day. Then it sort of looks like it's backtrack and then obviously to go into that sort of sleeping position. But I'm just going to set up the tripod quick um, and then I'm going to pull him out and just, or he, he, she, and then we're just going to have a look at him quick and then we're just going to release him back into the bush. Well, like I said, I'm just gonna, I feel a little bit bad for disturbing it to be honest, but yeah, I'm just gonna pull it out quickly just to show you guys. I've already got my um, in situ pictures and, and stuff like that, so we're all good. But yeah, I'm just gonna gently use the tweezies and just gently pull it out just so you guys can see it without stressing it out too much. Um, and there you go, that's the Namaqua Dwarf Adder, bit of Schmatterai. Um, you can see. So make sure you guys can get a decent look at her. Um, it actually looks like a. I'm actually not sure. I'll have to double check, but I think it's a female. Um, there she goes. She's just nicely out and about, so we can have a good look at her. Um, yeah, you can hear she's not happy. Um, she's hissing and going crazy, as to be expected. But yeah, the unfortunate thing with these animals um, living in the soft sandy habitat, it, it makes them quite easy to find if you know what to look for and obviously in the correct area. But yeah, they are quite severely poached um, for the pet trade. I was actually out in a particular area last year where I saw two different guys, two different groups of guys actually trying to look for these snakes, obviously to collect them and, and poach them, which is just yeah it's pretty it's pretty disgusting um i understand people want to keep animals in the pet trade but when you're taking animals out of the wild just to sort of fill your sort of greedy need for wanting to keep animals in glass little boxes uh, that doesn't count uh, or offer any conservation value at all so it's it's quite a selfish thing to do and these animals don't do that well in captivity the mortality rate is really high just because they live in such a specialized climate you know it's pretty cool out here during the day the nights get quite cold and it's quite an interesting sort of uh, climatological feature here where the sea breeze and the mist blows inland over over these sand dunes during the evening so that's obviously where these snakes get most of their moisture as we saw um, on some of the little uh, drips coming off this bush where obviously the snake has been sitting so yeah best left in the wild like all wild animals should never be taken out for sort of any reason especially reptile hobbyists trying to motivate themselves as being conservationists and doing conservation work when you're literally just exploiting wild animals bit of a joke really but that's the joy of field herping we are just gonna leave this girl right but i'm actually just gonna tuck her back where she was under the bush and we're gonna head out and hopefully we go and see if we can spot a couple more. You can see what I mean. The beach is literally just over there. So awesome. We've got our target and let's go. So I'm just walking back to my accommodation. I just found a <laughs> Dead. I just found a dead Cape sand snake. Um, I've been walking these dunes for literal days, hours, um, but this guy's flat as a pancake as you can see. But yeah, I have pretty much probably spent, I don't know, 7Ks walking the dunes today in hopes of seeing one, but not a chance. Uh, just this dead one here. At least I can 
vlog it, but yeah, what a bummer. So I'm just seeing a recce now before it gets too dark, but I thought I'd just come and check out down here by the beach. I'm gonna come back through later this evening and look for some desert rain frogs, which will probably be calling from all the sort of vegetation. There's the Western Dwarf Chameleon that's also all over these little bushes. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a crack. I'm gonna see how the road cruising goes tonight. Probably do oh, like about half of what I did last night. And then come back and concentrate yeah, on these dunes and see what I can turn up here. But I mean, as you can see, this, pra this place is pretty epic. I mean, typical of the sort of west coast of South Africa, tiny little fishing towns little fishing boats hanging out in the water so not a bad place to be even if you're just hanging out having a little holiday so you know what time it is well you don't but it's quarter to nine uh, obviously in the evening and we're gonna head for a little road cruise probably only do about 50 or 60 k's one way so about 120, 130 k's in total. Uh, last night was a bit of a bust. I mean, we got the coral snake, uh, we got a couple of geckos, but this area has a hell of a lot more good stuff than what it turned up last night. So we're gonna see how it goes. Um, the weather's looking really good back at where I'm staying for frogs and comedians a little bit later tonight. So after the cruise, we'll go hit that, but I'm sure in a little while we'll have something to report back on here, so I'll catch up with you then. And we've got our first gecko of the night. This guy just ran off the road, he's going crazy. Come on brother, just chill out. This is um, Barnard's gecko. Barnard's rough gecko. Um, you can see he's got this, unfortunately he has a little regrown tail. Um, but these things are absolutely awesome. Um, when I saw it, I actually thought it was a. Let me just get them in my hand again. I thought it was a scorpion at first, just because what they do is when they sort of get scared or have a sort of threat display, they take this rear their tail and they actually turn it over the body, and it looks just like a scorpion's uh, sting. Obviously, really nice um, dorsal patterns on there. Beautiful geckos. Uh, super chuffed to see it. Quite an unexpected find. I usually find them about a hundred kilometers from this area, so I wasn't expecting to see one. But really interesting pattern on the head there as well. Um, but yeah, this guy's really cool. We're gonna <clears throat> grab some quick camera photos. Just gonna move him across to the sand, obviously, and then we're gonna let him go. And this is Barnard's rough gecko. Let me just give you one last look at him. These evenings are incredibly cool. Let me grab my camera quick before this guy loses his patience with us. Oh, T-Swift. Um, just stopped for a snake. I'm pretty sure it's dead. Ah, oh, what a bummer. Um, it's a really little coral snake. We saw quite a few of these. Well, we saw two last night. Um, what a bummer that this guy's dead. But yeah, I'm just going to log a quick record of the occurrence. And then we're going to get out of here. In fact, it's not a man's, it's a very skinny female. Um, she probably just laid eggs recently, so not looking her best, but I mean, still really good looking geckos. And I mean, if you can see next to my hand, she doesn't bite me, <laughs> they're still a decent size. But yeah, we're just gonna chase this little girl off the road. Oh, shame, she's very thin. Um, we're just gonna chase her off the road and hopefully she doesn't get hit by a car. Don't go back on the road, please. Yeah, let me just take her off the road a little bit and then we're gonna carry on. We have a snake just about to get off the side of the road. Turn my light on. What have we got? Oh wow, this is a massive, an absolute tank of a bug out house snake. Lamprophis 
Well, I'm Provis. What am I talking about? This is Bodon Mentalis. Um, recently described as of last year, or the year before, 2020, or, or the end of 2019. Just please stop that. <laughs> Looks like he's just had a meal in him, or her. It's quite a size. But we are just going to move this girl off the road. See, I'm leaking a bit of coolant there. Just going to move her off the road. And just get a couple of photographs. She actually might be gravid. She's really, really heavy. I'll show you why they call them bug out house snakes. Have a look at those big googly eyes. I think she's going to turn around and bite me again. But epic. Nice, decent size bug out house snake. I mean, have a look at those eyes. These things are epic. Cool. Let me just move my car up the middle of the road. Let's just let this girl go quick. Absolute tank. Get out of here. Get out of here. There she goes. Um, I think they call these, the common name is the Calvinia gecko or the Western Cape gecko. Um, but in layman's term, this is the, well, not layman's, the Latin name for these is Pachydactylus labialis. You can see these got white, sort of rough, tubical skin. Much like the little Barnard gecko. They got these really little cute faces too. Um, you know, again, like all the Apacodactylus in this area, they don't have any nails on the toes. Yeah, I'm gonna grab a couple of photographs of these. I don't see a lot of these um, down in Cape Town where I'm from. So snap a couple pictures and you know what we do. We're gonna keep cruising and hopefully turn up a snake. Good evening, we are out and about, it's pretty chilly so <clears throat> I sort of bailed on the road cruising tonight, I mean I just haven't been finding that much stuff for the amount of kilometers and the amount of sort of fuel that I've been putting in so decided to just uh, give it a bust for tonight but I'm out here in the dunes and we're trying to go see if we can't find any desert mountain rain frogs to eat groups of macrops. I mean, I've been hearing them calling all around my accommodation, like, as I'm trying to get to bed, but I just haven't been able to turn up any of them. So the frog finding mission is turning more and more into a gecko finding mission. Here is another little Austin's June gecko, just in situ, just hanging out at the base of these sort of sticky re sticks hanging out obviously hunting but not going to disturb her we're just going to carry on and see if we can't find one of these previous that didn't take too long that is a very sleepy western dwarf chameleon protopodium oxen entirely um you would have seen in some, one of my previous videos i've seen one or two around the greater cape town area in the sort of last remaining pockets of Rhinosterfelt. Um, they're not particularly common down there. And these guys actually are one of the few chameleons that extend outside of South Africa. These go all the way up into Namibia, although I'm pretty much I'm about 90 kilometers from the Namibian border, so not too unusual. But you can see these guys are well adapted for living in this. Let's see if I can give you a bigger picture here. This sort of small scrubby dune habitat. They, they don't need the long sort of prehensile tails as the forest animals do. You can see he's not the largest chameleon out there. I mean this is by far a fully grown specimen as you can see. He's probably tip tip to tail uh, probably about 12 centimeters, 13, 14, yeah probably about 12 centimeters. Uh, so they do get a heck of a lot bigger him he's woken up now i'm just gonna grab a couple of voucher shots and then we're gonna carry on and see if we can't link up to any of these rain frogs which might just be a total bogey of an animal or they might just skunk us as the guys like to say but always nice to see these guys bradypodium occidentale western dwarf chameleon he's just a really nice looking example of another austin's gene gecko he's just booking it into this little bush here but yeah I don't want to disturb him too much 
So we can just have a look at his feet and his tail. He'll probably just burrow back or go into his little burrow. That's probably at the base of this bush here. But yeah, Orson's dune gecko. I think I'm gonna call it a night. Um, yeah, I've had no luck with the rain frogs. I've heard a couple more near my accommodation, but that's it. You can't get everything you need. So yeah, we're gonna call it a night and make an early start tomorrow. Cool, here's a bit of a change of pace, as you can see. Not that the fact that we're back on the road, that's just a given. But yeah, we're heading out to somewhere down there near those mountains. Um, it's quite overcast, it's super cloudy, it's actually a nice day to get out in the field. But yeah, I want to go try target a lizard um, that I've been trying to get hold of for probably the last three or four times I've been in this area. I just have absolutely no luck. I know they are in the area. Got two or three confirmed localities, and just got to get things right and make it happen. So we're gonna give it a give it a crack today, and just see if not. Well, we'll hopefully find some other stuff along the way, and I'll have to come back next time uh, and try and make it happen again. But yeah, this is day three. Still have a whole day here tomorrow, so we'll probably head into the dunes and just see what we can turn up but for now let's get to the spot we it's probably about 10 minute drive away and then we're gonna get after it have a look at this habitat where you can see we got up here in the chimney on this little skellum dry two-track road over here um, so what the plan is now, you know, I was wanting to get to those mountains all the way over there, but the habitat looks pretty good for what I'm looking for, particularly these, um, these like shards, you can see here, these like shards of rock that are, are forming, and the lizards that I'm looking for is Cordylus lorenzi, um, and they live in these really tight cracks, they, they're a very flat-bodied, suppressed Ordered, so we're hopefully gonna have some luck. You can see there's loads of this habitat everywhere, so hopefully we're gonna come right. There's a farm fence, but it's down, so are we trespassing if the fence is down? I don't know, but yeah, we're gonna have a good look. Um, I've got my torch, I'm gonna torch a couple of these cracks, and hopefully we're gonna come right. I've really been wanting to see these lizards for a long time, so we can get them it'll be pretty much a highlight a really nice highlight for me considering I'm just trying to find new species on this trip so let's give it a red hot crack and if or when I find something I will check in with you guys so that didn't take long at all um, I don't know if you can able to see this let's have a zoom in here right in the deep part of this crack here you really can't see there is one of the lizards we're looking for. I think you can just make out a piece of his tail there. But yeah, I'm gonna try to see if I can just gently tickle him out of this crack just so we can have a look at him and then grab some photographs. And there we go. This is one of the main major targets that I've been really wanting to see. Um, this is a Lawrence, I think it's Lawrence's girdle lizard or dwarf girdle lizard. Dialis Lorenzi. Um, this guy's obviously you can see he's busy shedding or something. So the animals would usually be completely black. Um, he's obviously just his old skin on there, but I'm not gonna mess around with that too much. But yeah, you can see how they live in these tight rock cracks. We can just see if they'll sit for a couple seconds. Um without him escaping. And they just sort of hang around in these tight rock cracks, feed on little insects. <laughs> I just lose it before I got a single photograph. Oh, there he is. Um, oh, I think he's gone now. Damn it. I'm gonna have to get him out of this crack because I haven't even got photos yet. That was not intelligent. Well, I got the lizard back out the crack just by using a little stick here to wiggle him out. But as I got him out, a bit of an unprecedented mistake, there was another one hiding in the crack, so I actually ended up with two. See, this other one also looks like it's sort of in a shed cycle. 
but yeah, super chuffed. I'm not gonna lose this, these guys again, but I'm just gonna grab some quick camera photos and then yeah, gonna see what else we can turn up here. Maybe we might find some snakes. It's quite nice rocky habitat for a certain really hard to find. This is pretty bizarre. I was just walking along these bridges here looking for more of these lizards and I just found a dead one just lying out in the open well, on that sort of rock ledge. A um, bit of a bummer, but yeah, this guy's very dead. Um, I guess just that's just what happens in life. Sometimes these things die. But yeah, just leave them there and we're gonna carry on. So here's just a look at ground gecko that I just turned up flipping a little rock on top of this hill. Quite surprised that they were up here. But yeah you can see they got these really big eyes, really chunky looking head, cute little feet. And this will be a female. The males have sort of white dots and spots along the spine. But yeah quite nice to see them in their natural habitat rather than just finding them on the roads. Now we've been finding the last couple. But yeah nice Nice little ground gecko, we're just going to put it back under its rock, get it out the sun, nocturnal geckos in the sun. Not the biggest fans, but yeah, nice to turn something else up, size our targets, and we're going to get some photos and get on along. So I've seen a couple of the other little cordylus in the rock cracks. Oh, there's just a, a crew girdle lizard, I thought it was one. But yeah, it's just a little curry girdled lizard, just in the rock crack there. But he's obviously not what we're looking for. We're looking for more of those Lawrence's girdled lizards. Yeah, I'm just going to give it another couple minutes here, just walking around. And then we're going to get to get some photographs. And then we're probably going to head back to another spot. But yeah, I'm impressed with how quickly we managed to find those guys. And we'll get some good pictures and we can go get on the next target. So here's just a better look at that absolute beaut of a bug at house thing just after I finished getting photographs of it. You can see this thing is absolutely insane. No guessing why they call it the bug out house neck. And you can have a look at those big bulging eyes which are quite atypical of any of the other bodon species. Um, these guys are quite interesting. They have been known to be different for, for I don't know, decades. Uh, and like I was saying, they've only recently in the last year or two been uh, classified as their own species. Yeah, this big girl looks like she's definitely gravid, so I'm not going to mess around with her too much. Got a couple of camera photos and I'm just going to let her go back into this rock crevice here. Awesome. hardly ever see these things. It's quite a special quite a special sighting actually. So let me see if I can't get hands on them quick. There you go, I managed to just get our hands on this little Namaka Day Gecko. It really gave me the buzz around. He just was not wanting to be caught. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, these guys, you don't see a heck of a lot of them. You don't see a lot of records of them. So a really nice unexpected find to be honest. Um, so I'm gonna just grab my camera out the car quickly, snap a couple of pictures and then let this guy go. Okay, cool. We got our target lizard species. So we are heading back down this mountain. Um, it's pretty rocky. There's some pretty dodgy sections with big rocks, but nothing the Jimny can't handle. So yeah, we're gonna head back to the accommodation, have the lunch, chill out a bit. It's pretty much done and dusted at this part of the world now for all the things I wanted to see, so pretty chuffed. And just like that, we're back on the tar. And you can see the landscape around here is insane. We just sort of right along the flat section of a big sort of ravine or a canyon, if you want to call it that. Um, but yeah, probably about half an hour from my destination. Gonna set up camp for the night, 
take it easy, <clears throat> maybe go do some road cruising tonight, do a little bit of active night searching just around the campsite and see if we can't turn up any new species for the trip other than that little plain sand lizard we just got at that quick little road tight stop. Um, it's been a pretty herbless day so it'll be nice to get some more herbs on the board tonight. So it's it's been a pretty quiet afternoon. I arrived at my camp, set up camp. I'm feeling a little bit over the trip at this point. I mean today we, we got that plain sand lizard. I got that little western rock skink that was inside the can which is just ridiculous. Um, I came to this particular ridge to get a particular gecko, the Namakwa thick-toed gecko, Pachydactylus namaquensis. I saw one in a rock crack just up there somewhere and as I tried to tickle it out the gecko just ran all the way out and I missed it. So a little bit bleak but I saw this rock crack here and I looked into it and I just saw a th piece of a tail so I wheeled a little branch in here and there we go it's another this is massive for me this is the um Piers girdle lizard namasosaurus piersi Pier um I've been wanting to see these things for two or three actually I don't know a long time good couple of years and I've always just blanked on them at first glance with the heavily keeled scales they look very similar to the just what I was saying before I cut off there, um, they look very similar to the black girdled lizards that we get back in Cape Town, but they're a completely different genus and a completely different animal. Um, these guys are absolutely ridiculous. How they survive in this extremely hot climate being pitch black, I have no idea. But I'm just going to grab some photos quick, of course, maybe it'll take a little while to get photos, but <laughs> we're going to get photos and then I'm going to head back to my accommodation and hang out. And chill out for a bit before we do a bit of road cruise tonight so at least we can chalk this little copy a little hillside herb off as a success so if we can see the mountain that means i'm definitely back home uh, i've probably got another 15 20 kilometers till i get till i get home so yeah thanks so much for watching if you've watched the last couple of episodes on the sit on the macroland series Thanks so much for checking them out. Uh, it was a pretty epic sort of seven, eight day herb trip. We saw some cool stuff, got a couple of good lifers, got tons of photographs. So.